Well, hi once again, everybody. Welcome to the Accustats 8-Ball Invitational. We're coming to you live from the Simonis Arena here at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey. This is day number three of our four-day event. We have six of the world's greatest players playing in eight-ball round-robin format, and all of those players were chosen by you, our loyal and devoted Accustats fans. You made great choices. We couldn't have asked for a better lineup. Thank you very, very much. At the conclusion of play tomorrow, the player with the best record will be crowned our eight-ball invitational champion. So please stay tuned with us. We've got four great matches for you today and at least three tomorrow. So let's get right underway with match number nine. Our first player. He has a record of one win and one loss so far in this event. He's from Trinity, Florida. Among his accomplishments in his career include a U.S. Open nine-ball championship, and he's the only man in history to pitch a shutout in a U.S. Open final. He's also a Turning Stone nine-ball champion. He's sponsored by the Universal Pool League. We know him as the Prince of Pool. Please welcome Corey Duell. Thank you very much, and his opponent, with a record of two wins and one loss so far in the Invitational. He's from Ackworth, Georgia. This gentleman was voted Player of the Decade by his peers in the 1990s. He's an 11-time Player of the Year, an unprecedented feat, and 15 times he's represented our great nation on the Moscone Cup. In 2009, he took his rightful place amongst the greats of the games by being inducted into the BCA Hall of Fame. He's sponsored by Scorpion Cues. It is the Scorpion, it's Johnny Archer. All right, guys, go ahead, please lag for the first break. And we're going to send this over to the booth to the voice of AccuStats, Mr. Billy Incardona, and his special guest, Jeff Conway. Take it away, guys. AccuStats Video Productions brings to you from Edison, New Jersey, at the Simona's Arena, the Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational Championships. So, along with Jeffrey Conway, I'm Bill Incardona. The, Jeff, this is day three. This is the first match of the day. Johnny Archer's record going into day three is two wins, one loss. Corey Duell's record going into the second day is one win, one loss. If uh, Archer wants to win this eight ball invitational championship, then I think it's almost essential that he wins against uh, Duel in this match. And if Duel wants to win, he has to win. He's not, you know, he just has to win this match if he expects to win it. Yeah, I agree. And uh, he played he played well yesterday, beating Alex. Uh, Alex didn't come with his best game, I don't think, but uh, I think that will give uh, Corey confidence for today's play, and I think uh, he definitely wants to try and win this one, that's for sure. You know, what I've noticed about 8-ball on a 5x10, there's a lot, a lot of inconsistencies. A lot of the players are playing really great one match and subpar possibly the next. The only player that I feel that has played great every match that he's gone to the table is Darren Appleton. Yeah, I agree with you 100% you know? on Appleton. I think his, his potting abilities and his uh, skills at the table and his confidence at the table, it's just a matter of making balls on the break. And yesterday he made, uh, I, I wrote a story on it last night for AZ, so I sort of got all the stats on it. And he made, uh, he had, in that match, he had uh, six breaks and made four times he made balls on the break, which, you know, the, the day before, he had six breaks and he made five scratches, uh, sorry, one scratch and five, no, you know, made no balls in five matches, so five games. So key is making balls on the break. And I'll comment a little bit more about that later on, but let's take a look at the, uh, at the way the balls are positioned on the table. Archer opted to go with the uh, yellow balls. The two down table are obviously open. The four that he's looking at now, he's trying to figure out how he's going to attack them. Uh, I think he's got a little bit of a problem. The ball closest to the pocket, adjacent to the red, near the old lower right-hand pocket, he's going to have to eliminate that ball. Uh, I believe if he... That's the area where he wants to end up, where he can shoot that ball, caroming into the red ball, and then go around the other red three cushions for position for the two other uh, yellow balls. Uh, he needs to come up further now. And now he'll cut this in and go three rails around. Yeah, that's causing a little problem there, that red. I think he can get around it, though. Well, uh, does it look like he can even cut it in? Uh, did he call a bank here? I'm, I'm assuming he can cut it in, but if he can't cut it in, he's going to have to bank it. 
And if he banks it, all he needs to do then is draw the cue ball an inch or so for a position for either the yellow in the corner or the side. And that's what he's done. Good shot. He's probably going to play the ball in the side pocket now for sure. He has the angle to go up table now if he chooses to. That would be an option. I don't think it would be a wise option, but nevertheless, it's still an option. Possibly it could be his shot because he may be thinking off the second yellow, the one that's there right to the right of the cue ball, may present too much of a problem to go up table off of that one, but he's in perfect line to go up table now. Let's got, see what he does. Got a little traffic there with those red balls, though. Oh, he put got past them. It's good. It's not often that you'll see a player leave a straggler when he has an opportunity to clear it like the yellow ball in the lower right-hand corner. Oh. But the reason he left that is because he didn't feel that coming off the other yellow, he had that good of a chance to get up table for those two balls. And so he might as well take, the, take it now while he had the opportunity to do it, and which he did. Now we'll come back down table for the lone yellow ball. He'll probably try to position the cue ball fairly straight on this ball, and then all he need to do is draw back for the eight ball, which is positioned on the adjacent rail in front of the lower left-hand pocket. He's really not happy. He landed a little awkwardly. He's gonna have to cut this ball slightly to his right, and in doing that, the cue ball is going to go to his left. He doesn't like it. He's gonna have to force this shot. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we Boy. saw him shoot this shot with a lot of speed, forcing it or he can just soft draw it near the side. He might even draw this back, I think. See what he was soon going to see. He's using the open bridge, too, because he's shooting over a ball. See, he would have liked to draw yeah. it more toward the side of the table where the eight ball was in. It's on, but he couldn't do it because of the angle. That's no gimme there, Billy. No gimme, but you know what? This guy's a pretty strong shot maker. He's close enough to the ball to hit it well, which he yeah. did. And uh, getting back to talking about the, the players and how they arrived and so on and who we like, who's playing the best. But w what I've also learned about these players is that these players have learned that after day number one, they found better ways to play on the five by 10. Correct. After day number two, they found even better ways to play right. on the five by 10. So they're learning how to defeat the table. So this is a learning process for all six of these players because the five by 10 table is not a table they're accustomed to playing on. Right, and Corey went to the soft break. I saw when he, he practicing crazy on uh, Thursday night late realizing he wasn't making balls on the break, and uh, he went to the soft break yesterday, and it seemed to be working for him. You know, that's just that, you know, one area of, of concern for the players, how to break them. But most importantly, how do you get out after the balls are right. broken? Well, that's no good there for Johnny, scratching on the break. And the balls are positioned kind of like funny, all on the left side of the table, yeah. just about every... The right side of the table is just almost totally void of any balls. Let's take a look at uh, Archer's break. I wish I could, but I don't think my monitor's working. <laughs> I think Johnny used the cut break but he forgot to hit balls on the on the way back cross table with the cue ball. Okay, we're up and running now. Well, we've got the eight yellow up the top of the table, which is going to be a problem at some point, but he's picked... Uh, I believe he's going with reds. Probably move that when he makes that red up near the top pocket, right, Billy? 
I don't know if he even has. Are you saying uh, the, the, the eight ball's the a problem? Ball, yeah. I don't think the eight ball is uh, that much of a problem. I do believe it, it goes. He's he's going to be concerned more with the uh, the uh, red ball on the side rail, the sandwich in between the two yellows. Yeah. He's he's in perfect line to play shake for that ball after this shot. No, he allowed the cue ball to go forward. That was, that was a big mistake. I don't know yeah. why he did that. He just totally lost his focus there, and he allowed the cue ball to go forward. I, that's the only thing I could think he did there, which uh, totally lost his uh, his focus and well, concentration. He's, he's got one shot here, but uh, he's going to be hitting. Oh, he can make the ball in the top pocket. And now he's going to have, if he's able to put this ball down, which is a difficult shot in itself, he's going to have to regain that pos position on yeah, the there table. You, go. To, you called that right. Yeah. It was difficult for him to put that ball down and also regain the position to, to shoot the other red, right. that troublesome red. Well, after that last shot that uh, basically lost concentration on, he's probably still thinking about that when he was making that shot. Johnny never dreamt he'd be back at the table so quick. Well, even, even though Johnny's back at the table, he has a lot of work in front of him and some problems. That yellow behind the eight is one of the big problems he has, right. and he's going to alleviate that now by moving it. He left Corey jacked up over the black with a very, very long and difficult shot. It'd probably be better to put the cue ball on the bottom cushion here if he could, because there's not too much, uh, not too much for Johnny to shoot at. You know, if he puts this red down, there's a possibility that he could run out, because then, then everything will be kind of like open. And, you know, if he puts this down, he'll have position on the red that's to the left of him. And then he can go cross table for position on that. Well, he hit, with, he hit that shot with right hand English. And then he, what else he did that was really bad is he moved to the position of yeah. the eight ball where now Johnny can pocket it. I mean, I don't understand why he I, hit that shot with I the speed that he with hit the it English with. English, I thought he was trying to park it on the bottom cushion. That's what I thought, because if he put it on the bottom cushion, there was nothing really for Johnny to shoot at. Well, I don't think he could have gotten to any safety battle with the, with the yellow because the yellow certainly outnumbered him. Right. So therefore, he would have had to try to pocket his ball. But I was surprised on the way he tried to pocket it with with, with you know with a lot of speed. Right. I would have rolled it that way if I would have pocketed the ball. I would have had a shot on the red behind the eight with the possibility of gaining position on the red that was uh, sandwiched in between the two yellows on the left rail, and he had a chance to run out if he would have done that. But with the speed that he hit it with, he complicated the shot, made it play more difficult, and he also lost control of the cue ball. I, 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 didn't, I didn't particularly care for it. And he opened up the eight. So uh, he, made, he made a mistake then that I think it's going to cost him. Johnny tried to brush the uh, yellow, getting it off the rail. But he also has an angle off of this yellow to possibly to go into the yellow and move it. Yeah, yeah, he's got a few balls in close proximity, so even if he sort of looks like he's going to get out of position, he'll probably still have a shot. Shots to carry this type of an angle often go into the other ball, double kiss it, and it doesn't really mo move anywhere. Let's see what happens with this one. No, he, he was, he was oh, able will. to move it. He said, I'm moving this. Yeah, and he got rid of the one by the red in the side pocket. So that was a great shot. The, the crowd appreciate that one. But I have seen a lot of shots missed that you wouldn't normally see miss, Billy, this week. Uh, you know, as we view the table, we're we, we're we're kind of like mindless that it's a five by ten. We're thinking that we're just looking at a pool table, mm -hmm. and, and we're uh, allowing the fact to escape us that this is a five by ten table. So therefore, when we see shots missed, we say, "How did he miss that shot?" But we're forgetting that this is a five by right. ten table. Exactly. No, exactly, exactly. 
This is, matter of fact, this is the only 5x10 table the pros are going to be playing on by Diamond. It's a one-piece slate 5x10, the only one of its kind. And the one-piece slate, uh, you, you would think that they would have a little bit of a problem with uh, leveling the table. Not so. This is a perfectly level table, and it's, it's, it's just one of the greatest tables you can play on, and these, yeah. all the pros are, uh, are in agreement with that. Yeah, and it's all, almost inch and three sixteenths thick, which is uh, a little bit thicker than normal. Now, he's fallen short of the mark. Uh, he definitely wanted to get down table farther than this. He's going to have to play the combo, which is... Uh, you're not really sure where this, the first ball's going here. And what he's probably going to try to do, he's going to probably try to make the combo and go into the red with the cue ball to stop the progress of the cue ball and stay down that end of the table for position. And, uh, uh -oh. uh, you know, he figured to have hit it on the left side of the red, which he did, sending the cue ball to the rail, which it did. So that was the problem with that shot. He just didn't have a good starting angle on the shot. Right. He's gonna, this is going to test his kick in here. Let's see what he does. He's going to oh. come off the bottom rail first. Yeah, I kind of like going two cushions, rail, uh, side rail, bottom rail, yeah. into the ball and then into the eight to move it so it, can, it be, so it can be pocketed in another pocket. Yeah, he's going to take what he gets here on the eight, I think. Yeah, but he's got to hit this with some speed. He can't roll it. Wow. Well, unfortunately, he's got no one else to blame but himself for that. Now, this would normally look like a walk in the park, Billy, but uh, I've seen so many of these runouts that have uh, not happened, so we'll see what... Yeah, you got to start with the ball on the foot rail, or this ball here. You have this ball here, then the ball on the foot, uh, the foot, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the head rail, and then back down to the ball on the side, because those are... And he doesn't want to get too straight on this ball. Wants to come, come pretty long down here. Oh, that's too hard. Uh, that's it's too hard. Sit on the other ball. That's too hard for this ball. Oh, <laughs> now he's going to shoot the ball on the side. Well, this is not. This is not going to be going very fast. He's just going to trickle this. I'd like to be as straight as he can on it. Well. I don't think he's going to do anything heroic here, Billy. Just uh, bring it back, maybe a foot. Well, this one went back and forwards, Billy. Yeah, this is rack number three. And the player that will have a one-game lead will be Corey Duell. Two games to one. And this is the Make It Happen tournament because there are, the, there are a, a lot of people that made this happen by supporting AccuStats and by making donations to this tournament. I'd like to uh, mention a few of them while we have a little time. It's Paul Bastable from Massachusetts, Marwan Alagaja from the United Arab Emirates. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I probably didn't, but uh, let's go on. There's Bob Duffy, you know, I, matter of fact, he might even be here. Bob, are you here? Bob Duffy here? I don't see anybody raising their hand. Uh, he's here, but, but uh, he's not uh, maybe in attendance. There's Joseph De La Garza from Texas, that's where I'm from. Todd Detro from Indiana. Ronald Downing from California. I don't think he's here. That's people from California, you know. He's probably watching it on the stream. Thanks a lot, Robert. Uh, Ronald. And there are others that I'll mention later on, but uh, we appreciate your support, the ones that I've mentioned and the ones I haven't mentioned, which I will later. We appreciate your support because if without you guys, this could have never happened, and you guys made it happen. Two to one duel, race to eight. Made a ball on the break, open table. Uh, the reds look pretty good. The yellows look don't look too bad with the exception of the yellow ball on the right side of the table. Excuse me, it's 1-1. One, one.
That was a very nice shot. Yeah, it was. He would like to pocket the red in the upper right-hand corner and then next pocket the red that's laying on the right-hand rail. That would be the... Uh, well, I, I wouldn't want to pocket this red unless I'm going to save the one up table for my key ball. Then he's, then he's awfully committed himself to saving the red in the upper right hand as his key ball. Sometimes as we see the angles here in the booth or possibly even around the room, it's not the angle that the player sees at the table. And a slight difference in angle can determine which path or which route you'll take or which pattern you'll take. Right. Also, many times we can't see how close the ball is to the cushion. We, th we think we know where it is, but it's a bit further usually. Well, oh, that'll work out. He hit the red solidly, f sending it toward that corner pocket in good line. So he's going to walk to the shot. He's going to have a real good look at the red ball and most likely pocket it in the center of the pocket with a soft follow. Nicely done. Yeah. He'll be able to reach this. He'll have to stretch a little bit. No, he's got to use the bridge. And that's one of the things about a 5 by 10 You know, if, if you're not really adept with the bridge, you're really not going to do well playing on a 5 by 10 So therefore, if you have any intentions of playing regularly on a 5 by 10 you better hone your skills with the bridge because you're going to have to use it quite often. Yeah, that was noticeable down in Tunica. And that's what I was talking about. Wow. If you're not really adept at using the bridge, you, you know what? You stay away from the 5x10. Right. But if you're forced to play in the 5x10, right. you better develop the well, skills to I use noticed, the bridge. I noticed even uh, in Dennis Acolo, even shots that were sort of near the middle of the table he was having to use a bridge on because he couldn't reach them, you know? Now, Johnny can attack it one in, uh, one in many, many different ways. He really doesn't even have to try to pocket anything right here. If I were he, I would, I would let Corey do my work. I would just roll up on this yellow right here and not even try to pocket it. Right. And let Corey back at the table and kick that red out of there. Yep, I wouldn't even try to make a ball. That's probably what he's going to do. We'll see. Okay, no, and he's opting to run out. See, I don't see any... You know, any benefit in what he's doing? No, I agree with you totally. Let him, let him, let him try and hit that red and probably move it away from the yellow. So if he goes on to air at the end of this rack in some way and gives Corey an opportunity at the table, he's brought it on himself. Now he did something similar to this in his first match. It was really a problematic ball on the table, and he, and he had all his colors on the table. Uh, he, 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 that, that's good. That's, he, he did it his second shot. Right. That's good. That's, uh, I, I was afraid that he was going to continue running balls and digging, digging yeah, holes. Yeah, and end up in the hole. Right. Well, he was trying to lock that ball up there, but that didn't work. So that was. Yeah, well, Johnny can do the same thing now. Johnny can go down where he congested those balls, and he can shoot a ball down the other end of the table and and snooker him. No, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do this. See, they're not playing three fouls, which gives the players the ability to 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 play endless safeties. Right, which we saw yesterday. Right. Now, Johnny's opting to shoot what I consider a half-difficult shot. I don't think I would have done this. But nevertheless, he made the shot, but he didn't really have to. Well, if he feels that good about himself, that's good. There's a little mess over there in that corner if he doesn't get dead right on it. Yeah, I would have definitely shot a yellow away and snuck him behind another yellow. Maybe he might do it here. Well, the one on the cushion... Definitely goes, I guess, yeah. Yeah, he's going to probably have to do a little traveling uh, on the next shot. He's going he's to probably keep an angle, then go two cushions for the, for the last ball, like here. And he'll go two cushions softly, ending up. I don't think he's going to shoot that ball unless he's absolutely straight in. Yeah, that's sort of a lucky move there. That's 
Well, not necessarily. He, could, he may have played it, but uh, had he not been straight in, then he would have had to go, gone two cushions, which isn't that hard of a thing to do. But he didn't have to because he was straight in on the shot in the side. Well, that, I thought that was going to be the quickest game of the uh, match with Corey, and it turned out the other way around. This is rack number three. Archer looking to uh, take the lead. Two games to one. And he does. Once again, the, the make it happen people that I would like to acknowledge. Terry Eddings from Oklahoma, just above this, that's the state above Texas. And the state below Oklahoma is Texas, and that's where Charles Fair is from. Jim Franklin from Maryland, Gary Ferking, Ferking, is that Ferking? Ferking, from Nevada. Yeah, that's the state that I used to live in, matter of fact. I'm all around. I mean, as old as I am, I guess I've been, <laughs> I've been in a lot of places, Chicago, Florida, I've Texas, been everywhere, man. Nevada, you know. Carl Galante from New York. Now we're here, now we're uh, hitting more close to home here. Well, thanks a lot, all you guys, for supporting the Make It Happen 8-Ball Invitational. Without you guys, there wouldn't have been an a Make It Happen tournament. Thanks again. There's the yellow on the side. Yellow goes. On almost the eight almost went in. Wow. The two red balls near the right side of the table where the eight ball was positioned. Big problem for the yellows. Yeah. Big problem for the yellows. He doesn't have a shot on a red. He doesn't have a shot He doesn't on have a much red. of a shot on anything, Billy. He's got a long, long yellow uptown. He's got half a pocket here in this uh, bottom corner. I think he's going to have to try and put that yellow in half a pocket here. I, 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 don't, I wouldn't want to take yellow. I wouldn't want to take yellow. He didn't get the best of rolls on that break. Johnny's 43 years old. Okay, what he needs to do here, Jeff, is he, he needs to uh, leave the table without Duel having the ability to pocket a red. So he's got to figure out what he needs to do. Well, he's, he's, play, he's pocketing a yellow. So I think that's all he has, Billy. Yeah, but if that's all he has, he doesn't have to take it. I don't know. He's just got to find a way of getting that eight out of there later. No, or leave sooner. It. <laughs> sooner or later. Uh, no. Well, if I, well, unless he can find something to hide behind, like the... Uh, well. See, I, I, I play a different type of strategy in situations like this. I give up my inning to position a yellow around that group over there in some way so I can alleviate that, uh, that problem with the eight you ball. You might bring this back and move it now. Like that. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. Yeah, I can't argue with that. You know, that was a good call, by the way. I can't argue with what he did. He was definitely a, a way to uh, to solve the uh, the problem. It's a, definitely a solution to the problem had he hit it a little bit better. But he still hit the top red. It opened up the bank on the eight. So that's an option that he may have later on. And he has a good key ball to lead him to that bank. That's the yellow ball near the left-hand side. Okay, that was a very nice shot. He would have liked to end up with a shot on the on the low yellow, yeah. but he didn't. He's going into that a little bit too good. See, he's walking around the table to see if the other yellow will go in the lower left-hand corner, and if it does, what kind of an angle was best suited to drop for the yellow there in the left, left side pocket to stick there for the bank on the eight? He may have to go cross table or go around the yellow by going two cushions because pocketing the yellow in the lower right-hand corner offers you more liberties. You can go, you can use the bottom rail, you can, right. you can go straw straight back, you can do a lot of things if you play position for the lower right-hand corner. I look for him to do that by swinging around. 
like this. Now he has a, a much better angle off yeah. this yellow to drop nicely for the yellow near yeah. the side pocket, stop the ball for the bank cross side on the eight, and he will have then, if he's able to do it, made an excellent out. Yeah, draw out of here, doesn't want to touch the red ball. Still going to have to rely on a bank. But thanks to him and an earlier shot, the bank is open. Yeah. Is it open when you go to the bank? The banks are open. Oh, the bank is open. Well, they're getting, a, was it, $1,000 a match? So <laughs> I told uh, Appleton yesterday when he won two matches, I said, if you did this every day, it's like uh, 750000 a year. Here we go. This is what he played for. So he totally prepared himself for this ending shot. And let's see how well he does with it. It's always best to prepare yourself for the inevitable or, the, or a shot that you feel is going to be inevitable. And he's got an extra 15 seconds since uh, Friday morning. Shot clock got extended to 45 seconds. Yes, yes. Like it had eyes on it. In its, in, its, in its racks like that, it's games like that one that really pump you up, you know? You, you, there's a lot of complexity out there. There's a lot of problems out there. How rack. you, yeah, how you deal with them and then how beautifully you get around the balls, open up avenues, and then run out. It really pumps you up. It really elevates your confidence, and it sends a message to your opponent. I mean, that's the type of racks a player wants to, wants to do good with because it does a lot. Calm down, Billy. Calm yeah. down, oh, Billy. Yeah. Oh, Calm yeah. down. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm just telling you the importance. It's, it's important to uh, to make a commitment and do well with it, particularly one that carries all the difficulties of the one he just made. You know, it, it was a yeah, great, he, great playing. He came to terms with the problems on the table and beat it, so that was good. Right. He beat the table. And he, be, uh, he beat the odds. Anytime we beat the odds, we feel really good, don't now, we? We were talking earlier about ages. We've got Corey Jewell at 34. Um, he'll be 35 in November, and Johnny is 43, and he also will be uh, 40. He'll be 44 in uh, November. Yeah, and and billiards and pool is one of the uh, the uh, rare games where a player can stay in his prime for a long, long time. I mean, a player can actually be in his prime at the age of 25 to practically 45. So you, ha you may have a 20-year span where a pool player can really play well for, for 20 years, unlike uh, all other sports. If you had a facelift, Billy, would it improve your game? Huh? If, I, <laughs> if, I, if I had a facelift? Would it improve your game? Well... I don't know. I'll have to think about that one for a while. <laughs> it probably would. You know, you're right, <laughs> Jeff. It probably younger. would. You know, there's something to it. I could psych myself up. It would probably pr improve it for like an hour at least. <laughs> As you hobble to the mirror and look at your new face. You know, I'd feel good about it for like an hour, and then reality would set its head in. <laughs> He's chosen the the uh, the red balls. I don't know why, but that's what he did. Unless that yellow by the side pocket is frozen on the rail, you know, and uh, not capable of being pocketed in the side. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, I was just I actually the words on my lips. I was just going to say he's such a great potter of the ball, and he missed. It's unbelievable. Now Johnny gets back to the table, surprised. Is there any way that we can get a better look at the position of the yellow by the side pocket? Can we can we zoom in on that ball and just take a look to see where where it is? You know precisely. It's about the best we can get. Okay, we're going to go there now because that's going to really uh, give us an idea. Oh, there it is. I don't think that ball can be pocketed in the side. So that's, that's a very difficult ball to play position for and pocket. He may, he may be better off going, for, going to it on his next shot. Go to it while you have another ball 
that you can play position on that's convenient. Go to that problematic ball when there is convenience in regard to where is your next ball. Yeah, the most natural way of getting there is best. Don't save that ball until all the other yeah, balls keep, are gone. You got to get to it. Keep putting it off till last. It's like life. It doesn't work. Oh, he's going to, uh, he tried to get over there to attack it. He might do it, play no. this ball in the side pocket and draw but, across for it there. Yeah, but he's got a good angle. He was a little fortuitous in that kiss there. He's got a good angle now on the yellow on the side. I think he might even move this here, Billy, just see if he can nudge it and get it off the cushion. Yeah, he's got a good angle now to drop nicely behind the yellow by the side. And he's got a ball adjacent to the yellow in the center of the table to play position on. Yeah. So therefore, he really didn't lose much, if anything, by going into the other ball, you know, inadvertently. But he's got a good shot on this, this yellow. This is the key shot in this rack. Now he's going to take, he, he's not shooting it. I don't believe he's not shooting it. No, I can't believe I that. I think he's going to draw back to that position, Billy. I think he's just looking to see where he's going to be on his next shot, maybe. Yeah, he's, he's playing it very meticulously here. He's trying to go back and try to figure out exactly where he needs to be. When you're going across that gap, you just trust those rails are in line. Yeah, it is. Now, this shot here, I think he's straight. If, and if he has a slight angle where he needs to cut it to the left, he's got to just roll this ball softly and put his uh, trust in the trueness of the table here. Yeah, it doesn't want to roll too far. Just he's got to run a little bit. Very softly. Six inches, six inches forward. Slow down. No, that's perfect. Yeah. That's absolutely perfect. He's got a nice angle on the yellow ball an angle that will suggest to me that it could play position for the yellow in either po top pocket, either the top right or the top left, depending on how he feels the best shot would be to play position for the black eight. I think he's going to end up playing the uh, both yellows in the same pocket. Yeah. That eight ball is not positioned uh, too good. He's, he's going to want to get underneath the eight yeah. for the side. Well, he, he didn't do what I, I thought he might. He might play this downtown. Does it go downtown? Yeah, it does. Comes back down this corner. Yeah, that's what he's looking at right there. He's got there. two pockets available. He's got the pocket that he just walked across available. But he's really focused and, and, and keyed in on pocketing the eight either in the side or the bottom right corner. He's going for the side. Yeah. He's going for the side. Yeah, we heard him. He doesn't have a large opening here, considering the angle the eight's going toward the pocket on. So this shot is missable. He's got to prepare himself, because he knows this is a big shot. And he knows this shot is very easily missed. Usually you shy away from the first corner and hit the second corner. That's what yeah. He was really pumped after he made the eight. He knew that shot was a tough shot. And he's playing really beautifully. The rack that preceded this rack, he played that rack beautifully, and he followed up with another yeah, beautifully and, and, executed. And that all, go, that all goes to help his confidence in the next rack. Oh, so. yeah. He's playing really well right now. He's, he's one of the leaders at two wins and a loss, and he's looking to, uh, he's looking to, to uh, leave this match with a three-to-one win-loss record. Wallace. All right, Johnny opted to uh, take his break here. Anyways, we're back. Johnny's back. And hopefully uh, he brought back with him the same, the same mindset that he's had throughout this match. Johnny uh, didn't come up with a ball. That way I spoke too quickly. I spoke too quickly. The table is open. And it appears at a glance that the yellow balls are the better of the two colors. At a glance, I'll just take a, a deeper look at it now. Yeah, there's one yellow down. There's a, a little bit of a problem area, and that's on the right side of the table where the eight ball is. There's a red over there and a yellow over there that uh, 
Yeah, that could, got one, could present one, a problem. That one ball there doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't look like it goes uptown. It doesn't look like it goes this one here. It doesn't look like it goes anywhere. So he's going to have to do something with that later. Uh, if the uh, yellow ball by the side pocket in back of the eight, the one closest to the rail, he's going to take a look at it now. If that ball can be banked or made in the side pocket, well, it can be banked, but at first he'll have to pocket the yellow that uh, is to the left of it. But then again, cross table, there's a lone yellow over there by the side pocket. The, the, even though that's wide open, it does present a problem because it's all by itself and there's no real ball to play, you know, that's convenient right. to play shape for it. So, he, so he's going with, with reds. It was a very difficult choice. There wasn't anything clear-cut about what, what, which color group was better, yellow or red. It's just a matter of personal preference. And from what I've seen... He's not going to like this, Billy. See what he's left himself here? Hasn't got much on at all here. Got that long red up, up top there on the right-hand side. Well, he, he can uh, shoot the red that was left, the one he's dressing now, and cut it. Not but he's going to, you know what, he would like to, he would like to get rid of the red that he's shooting over now to his right. That's the, that's the red he really needs to get rid of. He put the inside English, too much inside yeah, English on did. that he's shot. He's that out, but too much. Now he's on a bad side of the red here, and he's forced to shoot this red. And the cue ball is going to go right toward where the other red is positioned. And this is not a good angle. This is not a good angle. Very problematic. Wow, he was oh, able. Was, yeah, and yeah. He, he put in some spin on that to get it over there. That was a great shot. Mm -hmm. See, but the problem still is the two reds behind the yellow on the eight ball side yeah. of the table. And he has to clear that middle red on his next shot. If anything, they're more of a mess than if he'd have chose yellows. It's sort of funny. He has to clear this red, or the next red, on his next shot, on the, uh, the one that's positioned <clears throat> underneath the other red. He may even be better off going into one of the reds here. Because he's got a lot of work. He's got to create something better, I think. Okay, that's much better. But did he, did he block the pocket for the... Uh, oh, he blocked the... Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, that's ironic. The top right it pocket. Was a great shot. It was a good shot, especially at the angle he was on that ball. He had to, he had to really work with that. He had to make that happen, that's okay. for sure. Here's a shot that he has available that's a very difficult shot, but it's really worth considering. If he can draw the cue ball back and pocket this red and draw the cue ball underneath that red that's on the other side of the side pocket... He will then have made a great shot and will probably win this game. I don't even know if he's looking at it, but this is the shot. If he can draw the cue ball back into that red, now he's opting to stay away from that. He says, too risky, too difficult. Well, it looks like he sort of like threaded a needle there. He did. Once again, I think we're going to see him play position for a bank. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he's going to play position for the bank, and it's not going to be that easy to attain the angle that he needs to bank the red. So he's going to have to play field goal position by drawing it in between. If he, can, if he has the ability to do that, draw it in between the black eight ball and the he, yellow ball. He might follow this round. I don't, know. He's a I don't, think, he, I don't think he can follow it around. He's going to have to draw it in some way. It looks like he is going to follow him around. By following it, he's going to, that head there, he's going to draw it now. See, he couldn't even draw it in between no, the uh, the black and the yellow. No. He was really no, awkward no, on it. No now matter how many skills, all these serious, skills could serious get him problem. out of that one. Serious problem here. I don't know if the bank's open. Sometimes the bank's not open, and they close at 3 o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. He's taking a look to see if the bank's open cross corner. Now he's taking a look and to see, I don't know, I guess he's looking cross corner back. I don't know. I don't think it's open cross corner. I think he has to go cross side. And going cross side, he's really got a problem. 
but he but he's determined to see cross be corner. Off, oh, sorry, but I think he'd be better off drawing. He's going for the bank, but I think he'd be missed it. I thought he would have. I thought he would have been better off drawing down at the bottom rail and leaving him no shot because there was if he could have oh, put no. it down here. No shot. No. Whenever you have one color left on the table, you and, he, and your opponent has six. There's no safety there. There's just no safety there. I don't know what he was trying to do. Uh, he was trying to kick at it in the side. Oh, I see. So therefore, he had a. He had to try a, a nearly impossible shot to win the game. So that uh, tells you in itself that, you know, there's no safety with one, one color of your color group left and your opponent has six colors of his color group left. There, just, there, is just any, there is any future in playing safe from that position. Well, he certainly handed this on a plate to Corey. Yeah, and maybe that shot that he had, that I thought that he had by drawing off the red behind the other red looks pretty good now, <laughs> you know, but uh, he passed it. This is game number six, Jeff, and uh, if, if Corey can put the, uh, the yellow in the, in the eight down, he'll be within two games of the lead, trailing only by the score of four to two when it could have been five to one. Right, Big yeah. swing. And that would have been a nightmare. Big swing. Right, race to eight. Race to eight, four to two, Archer. And uh, Archer's still playing beautifully out there. That last rack was a very complex rack with several, several areas of deep concern, which he wasn't able to do well with. But uh, nevertheless, I mean, still played well in that rack to do what he did do until he was confronted with a situation that was just too tough. He's just saw a nice picture of Johnny concentrating, sitting in his chair. Corey's going to hit the second ball, the ball behind the head ball. Now watch the action he gets with the eight. It didn't even move. Look at yeah. the only ball on the table that didn't move. <laughs> That's hilarious. I can't believe I said that. <laughs> but anyways, every rack, the eight ball's been getting plenty of action well, he, he, because of the method he's, he's, by which he's breaking the balls. And that's the only rack that the eight ball didn't move. He's, he's the only guy who made, uh, made an eight ball on the break, and he made two yesterday in one match. That's yeah. pretty cool. Probably not going to happen again. Johnny, Johnny's uh, looking to take the yellow here. Now, here's the problem with taking the yellow. After he makes this commitment, now the yellow becomes the worst color because of the yellow that's positioned at the other end of the table, and the red becomes an easy color. So right. therefore, this is a tough thing to do here. Right. Once you make this commitment and choose the yellow, you open up the only problematic area on the table for the red ball, red balls. So therefore, he should reconsider here maybe and take a look around. I don't know if I would take the yellow this quickly because this may not be the right thing to do. And if yeah. you commit yourself here, you need to run out. I think his main concern is that red sitting by his pocket, so he just wants to make sure that... that now you need to run out. Well, he was kind of lucky in, in a sense that the red tied up the yellow because now he doesn't need to run out because the red doesn't go either right. unless it goes cross corner. You know, that wasn't an easy decision to make the one he just made. By making that decision, he forced himself, he committed himself to have to run out. Obviously, with the exception of if, if he tied up a ball, that would preclude both players from running out. 
So he, this is this is a this is a good shot. If you don't have a good shot, and you have the ability to move a ball that's problematic, move that ball. That's exactly what he did. I kind of like, here's what I like. Let me an overhead, please. Here's what I like. I like shooting this red. I like shooting this red down the table and putting the cue ball over here, okay? Uh, I wouldn't open that up. I wouldn't have opened it up. No way would I have opened it up. Look what he did. He opened it up and he played position for Archer. Now, that was a Big mistake. I would have shot the same ball he shot, but I wouldn't have opened those balls up. And the reason I would have shot that red down the table, I would have positioned the red down this end of the table as a possible solution to open up the balls with he just opened up at a later time. But he didn't do that. Yeah, he, I think he inadvertently opened those balls up, and it's going to cost him this game. Slow down. Well, I'll tell you what, he may have a shot at the red and the, uh, the yellow in the upper right-hand corner. That's a real long shot. I don't know if he does have it, but he's going to take a look at it. If that's all he's got, he'll uh, take I th it. I think he has it. I think he has it because he gave me that half nod nod, meaning that, well, I'm lucky to have gotten this shot, so now i got to make it very difficult shot. Uh. He's really really hitting the balls well. Yeah, he's staying down on the shots nicely as well. Yeah. When you shoot over a ball and the cue ball travels eight feet before striking another object ball, and that object ball has to go another foot, you better hit it good. Now you have to figure out where your, what your plan is. Wants to stop this on that, if he slides it a little bit to his left, he just wants to hit that red and Play the other yellow in the side pocket. That would be an option. Let's see what it does here. Oh, he don't want to tie up the eight. Right. Now he's going to have to come with a with a shot on the yellow on the side, in a small opening. He's going to have to shoot it into a small opening here, not very large at all, but he's close enough to the ball to hit it accurately. And the eight ball goes in two pockets, Billy. goes in the side pocket and the bottom pocket. No, he didn't get it. Oh. He didn't get it. Screw up there. Oh, my God. See, sometimes the, the opening that you're shooting into appears larger than it actually is. Right. And that really, from my vantage point, was a very small opening. Players in this match are getting gifts handed back to them, that's for sure. Yeah. Let's take another look at that opening. And I, it's not, well, that's the uh, the angle that you really can't look at the opening. You can just see that he missed it. Yeah, he just overcut it. You know. But the uh, other angle would have showed you the smallness of the opening that he had. And that's a very, very nicely struck ball right there. If the red goes in the corner, then he's made himself a real good shot. On one monitor, it looks like it doesn't, but I guess it does. Okay, if he's going to go down the table now to get those other balls, now's the time to do it. You want to do it when you have the red that's underneath the yellow on the left side of the table still there, because that'll be your uh, option ball to drop down for the two of balls on the near the foot rail. Now you got to make sure that you don't hit this too hard to go two cushions cross table and scratch but hard enough to, but hard enough to get across table and use this yeah, uh, I think this is a this is a walk in the park here I don't see any problem yeah they I should said, said that before though <laughs> so you know he, he would like to roll this in so well this is a type of an angle that balls skid on sometimes but not that time 
And that seems to be one of the only things that probably could have stopped him or precluded him from getting out. You know, when you see something unexpected happen, like a ball skidding. Most times, I think, is when they take it for granted and they, they sort of lapse in concentration when they know it's a, almost a dead ball. And the reason he shot that ball is because he knew if he hit it with the speed that he hit it with, he would then be offered an automatic angle to drop nicely for the eight in the opposite pocket. It's which will be a natural angle. Well, this is good for his cause because he's now closed the gap to 4-3, only one behind. And he likes it. <laughs> but uh, Johnny don't. Right. So after seven games, we have, like Jeffrey said, four games for Archer, three games for Duel, and it's, I think it's Archer's break. Archer's always going to have that break going for him when he has the lead. Or when he's behind. There's a player that you, a young player, matter of fact, uh, Jeffrey, that uh, you're really high on. That's Phil Burford or yeah, is Burford, it Burford from the UK. Uh, only 21 years old. He's sort of been around since he was eight years old, like a lot of these young proteges. And uh, he basically every every tournament I put him in in the US, he won. There was not one I didn't put him in any tournament that he didn't win. So I guess. If that's a good horse, I guess. I think I guess that's a good horse. And he would have uh, added a, a lot of uh, luster to this tournament had yeah, he, he had he been a Yeah, he would. He's just his, his name's not that known as much. You know. Oh my! He's going to scratch. Wow. <laughs> Johnny's looking in disbelief. What the heck happened? I mean, what are you going to do? I mean, he walked away from the table. You know, I mean, he's not angry, but he's just saying. Well, he, he, I guess he uh, came to the realization that what are you going to do? I mean, what, uh, there's nothing you can do. That's pull. That's the cruelness of the game right there. That's one of the cruelties playing pull. I mean, you break the balls well, you control the cue ball well off the break, and all of a sudden, here we go. There's the break, okay? Now, the, uh, everything's going good. As a matter of fact, he, he, he uh, had hopes of making the eight and winning, and all of a sudden, he gets a kiss, and what do you think happens? Bingo. He scratches. And again... What we, are you going to do? And again, we got the opponent coming to the table with a surprised look on his face, I think. Yeah, from going from a possible win by pocketing the eight on the break to a very probable loss. And uh, this time, the yellows look as if they're in good positions. Nothing, uh, nothing on the rail or anything, so no reason why he shouldn't run these out. This next shot is going to be a, a very important one. He has to yes. come up with a shot after this. Yeah, no guarantee little. that he will. No guarantee that he will. No guarantee that he will. Wow. Yeah, he had a little, had a little traffic with the red balls there. That was probably the most difficult shot he was going to play. Now so he's, he's going to have to probably play the one, or excuse me, the yellow off to black. Yeah. Which will, which will move the eight off the cushion a little bit, which will be a good shot. And still, the yellow on the adjacent side of the table is going to be a problem. That's always going to be a problem unless he takes care of it, yeah. which he should as soon as possible. We're just going to run this down the bottom rail. Careful. Oh, he's going to, whoa. He's going to have to, at some point, go into that yellow with the cue ball. Yeah. to alleviate the problem and maybe reposition. Or try and get on the cushion side of it and play in the opposite pocket, maybe. If he's, yeah. Depends if he gets that chance. Right. It's all about what chances come his way. Well, he's got to make the chances, what he's got to do. Because there are only two pockets available for that yellow. That's too hard. That's too hard. 
He still has a shot, but he's going to be hitting over the other ball. Going to be stretching, probably using a rest. Now he's running out of options. He's getting very, very thin. Getting frustrated as well. On his, on his options now. So if he has a difficult shot and one of them is the one he's looking at now, that's the shot he should take. I don't think this is bankable. He's like trying to bank across the side. I don't think it even goes. Where I'm looking on the monitor, it doesn't look it. Oh, he, oh, what, he, you know what, he's, <laughs> he's such a creative player. Yeah. He may be one of the most creative players in the world today. And the reason I didn't think that it could be banked cross-side, because it couldn't be banked straight in cross-side. It would have had to be banked off of a carom, carom. And that's well, the way he envisioned it well, he, he and got, tried. He got pretty lucky here, Billy, because there's, there's not really, there's a shot in the left-hand side pocket which the ball does go past the eight, but. You know, we're, we're gonna go back to that shot after Archer shoots. He's gonna play a safety here. Now, this ball cannot be bank cross side, so he, he hit it into the red and figured it would be go cross side this way, possibly in two ways, either straight in yeah. or off the eight. That yeah, was an all, excellent almost angle. Almost made that off the eight. That was a great shot, creative shot. Yeah, that was a great but angle, and, and it the, showed us exactly what he had the degree of difficulty was very high, though. I mean, that was, chances of pulling that one off were pretty high. Well, it wasn't any higher than the degree of difficulty by doing something else. <laughs> there was nothing else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, it's, you know, it's good to know or it's good to have that type of creativity in situations like that when there really isn't anything right. apparent right. Well, available. He's, he's left Johnny a cut in the side pocket here. Just be careful he doesn't scratch. Well, this is what Johnny was working for when he opted to play safe. He knew that when he came back to the table, he would have some kind of a shot, which would be a better situation to deal with in the one that he with the one, in, in, instead of the one that he was confronted with the last time was at the table. So he's earned this, and let's see how well looks he like does with looks it. Looks like he's playing this uptown, Billy. No, nah, he's going to the side, I would think. No. Uh, he's gonna lock the yellow up. Well, he got away with this. No, he certainly did get away with it. Wow. I d can we get an angle on that yellow behind the red and see if he can pocket it? Downtown. In the in the, uh, in the corner, I don't think he can. No. Yeah, he can. He's, yeah, he's called it, Billy. Well, he doesn't have anything near a full pocket. He's going to have to hit this shot perfectly. This isn't even a shot, I don't think. Wow, he hit it about as perfectly as he could yeah. hit it. And he's hooked himself. To make a shot like that, you would think he was entitled to a better reward. Yeah. Oh, he's got it. He's got a shot there. He's got a shot, but what he's going to need to do with this shot, he's going to have to uh, carry him into the other yellow and play position on the next yellow by moving it. Cats only have 13 lives. I don't know how many Johnny's got. He had three lives. He doesn't even have a pocket here. Look, you can see the angle. Look, he hit it about as perfectly as you could yeah. hit it. And he had to use the cushion. That was a great shot. And I'm going to tell you what I would do here. I would make a ball, and then I would trade play position. If you can give me an overhead quickly, I would play position somewhere around here where I can make boom, boom, this ball. Or I'll, if I can get over here, I can make this ball and hook him behind this ball. But that's kind of like what I, what I would be trying to do in some way. See, he's trying to play position. Me, me an overhead, please. He's trying to play position so he comes over here makes this ball and leaves the cue ball back here. That's what he's trying to do. 
because he can't run out, so he's going to need to pocket this yellow in, at some point and hide, hide the duel from this yellow. Now he's going to try to do it here. He's going to try to get behind the other red, and he's gotten too thin on this red. I don't think he can control the cue ball. Just put it on the top rail, probably. I'll tell you what he can do. Oh, an overhead. I'll tell you what he can do. He can pocket this ball and go one rail, two rails, and drop over here. If he can drop over here, then he can pocket the yellow off of this red and hook him behind here. Right, that's if there's enough room between the cushion and that red. That's there. what he could do. He's not trying that. Well, he just he's saying he's saying that Corey can't make this yellow. Okay, now I wouldn't want to do this because. You're putting the Corey's fate in his hands now. If he can make this yellow, then he'll get position to run out. Now, you're gambling here, aren't you? I don't know if I would have done this. I think I would have tried to uh, pocket the red and play position to the area of the table that I, uh, that I uh, drew out. And uh, Anyways, that's, a, that's an option. Now, of course, he has no choice. He has to try to cut the yellow in and put all his egg. No, he's kicking. This is another viable option, which I didn't, uh, and he hit it perfectly. Oh, my God, there we go. Well. We've got a picture of Corey sitting in his chair here. Very frustrated now. It'd be nice if he could play the combination. You know, that's the uh, red uh, that's underneath him. Not that one, but the, uh, the one in the center of the rail. If he had the ability to play the combination, I think this rack would play very simple. Or maybe it wasn't open. Now when he gets ball in hand, he'll probably play the combination. Maybe. Well, this is going to test uh, Corey's ability of billiards. He's, <laughs> he's called it in the corner. This will bring the house down if he makes this, Billy. He's got to go with. He's got to go with a kill. Left English, and, and lengthen it off that second rail, like that. Look at this shot. Low. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was worth the price of admission, <laughs> Billy. That was worth the price of admission. Oh my. Good shot, man. Says Mr. Archer. <laughs> wow. Archer doesn't have anything that's simple. Uh, I, Billy, if you went back to two seconds ago when he was hiding behind that red ball, you never would have yeah. dreamt that he would now not have a shot. You know what I mean? He's got to try to reposition the cue ball at the other end of the table behind those two reds, just like this. Well, this is going to work out really good. But compared to the last shot Corey had, this is an easy one, right? I don't know. I don't think there's any rails available for him to kick off of and into the one, into the yellow. He's going to probably have to bend or do something, jump or bend. Well, he, no one jumps better with a full he's stick. Gonna right he's going to have to twirl something here. And even if you twirl it, I don't even know you, if you can create the angle needed to contact the yellow. He's going to have to twirl and uh, hope that something crazy happens for him. And it didn't. Yeah, that was not so good. No, it was, a, it was a pay me now or pay me later type of a shot. You know, what, what are you going to do? Now, Johnny should run these out, but we said that before. And uh, see people get out of position. Let's just watch patiently and see what happens here. He would like to play position for the ball that's frozen on the rail because that's if, if there's any ball on the table that you consider a tough ball, it would be that ball. But he's not. He's going to use he's going to use that ball as the ball to get onto his key ball, which I don't have a problem with. Probably but, play, uh, play but that ball on the cushion next, right, Billy? But sometimes I don't know. I think he's going to play that ball. Uh, I thought he should have played the ball up table next and use these two balls last. Now he can he can play this a number of different ways. I my, myself would play the ball that's up table next. 
What you did? I would play the ball that's up table next, but now it's gotten a little weird on it, so now. See, that's a long way to reach on that table as well if you play yeah. the one up table. Now, now he's going to. But I, I, I don't think I would have played the pattern the way he did, but there's so many different ways to play it considering where the, where, where the balls were positioned, you know. Oh, it's, nice it's, it's hard to argue against any method or any preference from from where the balls were positioned. Well, There's about 100,000 different combinations. He's looks set to go 5-3 uh, up here. Archer looking to gain a two a two game advantage again at 5-3. to three. And after he does that, we'll go back to that three cushion shot that, she, that uh, Corey uh, tried to execute and almost made. 5-3, Archer. Yeah, he's going to he had to hit a little inside English to lengthen this off the second rail. Well, he looked in jail here. This is no question. And when you, this is a really great shot. One rail, two rail, three rail. And he played the yellow in the corner, Ooh. and he didn't miss it by much. Wow. It was only like a fraction of an inch difference in missing it or making it by where he hit on the rail with that shot. Well, make sure Pat knows where that highlight is, and I'm sure that will get shown again later. And he made a real, a very difficult kick to the shot before that when he kicked in the, uh, no, that was his last kick, All right. when he kicked in the ball in the pocket and scratched behind it. So uh, a little ill-fated in, in that regard, but... He's, ex he's explaining to Johnny now what he was doing. Well, he's got a big hill to climb here, Billy. Nine, five, three down. You know, well, that's what makes champions champions, Jeffrey. They can climb those hills. Exactly. Yeah, they don't care how many they're behind. They can climb them. Like myself, I got a trouble getting out of this chair. <laughs> but <laughs> at times. I think you're just saying that to get a spot off somebody. No, but I do play a mean game from the chair. Yeah. I would like to be a coach on the Moscone team. Yeah? Cup team, yeah. Yeah. For which side? We'd beat your guys if I was for the coach. Which, for well, which I, side? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick size. <laughs> I'm, I'm an American. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just because you're up here with me now, do you think I'm going to lose my? <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm a loyal American. I'm going for the red, white, and blue. I'm stuck in the middle because uh, <laughs> I, I ride, I ride on it. I have to try and keep neutral. <laughs> it's very difficult. Nah, I can understand. I can understand. Good shot. So there was seven balls on the table red, Billy, but he decided to take those. You know, I kind of like his, I can see his pattern here. It's obvious, at least it looks obvious. He'll then take care of the ball down here. He should go up for the ball in the center of the table next. And then his uh, next to last ball should be the red that's positioned near the upper right-hand corner. That will lead him to the, the red position near the right-hand side, which all we need to do then is stop for the eight. He would like to get rid of the center ball, center red now. Yeah, I heard you saying about that yesterday when I was listening to your commentary. The Those balls in the middle of the table, you like to get those out of the way because yeah. it's bad the, traffic, right? No, the balls in the middle of the table are, are deceiving balls. They appear to be good balls because they can be pocketed in so many pockets, but sometimes they're hard, they're hard to, uh, to play position off of. I kind of like him playing position for that ball uh, on on off of the preceding shot, but that's okay as long as he was able to eventually get there and leave that red near the right hand low corner still there. It's because that ball is laying perfectly to play position. Mm, almost missed it. That's why those balls are difficult. Yeah. Uh, 
Now, this ball here is in perfect position to stay on this side of the table for a straight-in shot on the remaining red, which will put him in perfect line for the black eight. Yeah, because that black is uh, limited to where that can go. Only just that one pocket, I think. Maybe the side pocket as well. Right, that, but no, uh, the, the, the corner is, is the correct shot. Right. Well, he made that a little harder for himself than he wanted. Yeah. But he's close to the eight ball. He's close to it. He's got a good vision, a good view, a good look. And he missed it. And he missed it. Wow. Corey. And there was no excuse for that, really, no. because he had a chance to get better position than that. That was just a little sloppy. And it was running through the ball again like he did on the other And shot. I'm going to tell you why that happened the way it did, because he had a problem with the ball in the center of the table. He ended up having to shoot that ball in a, in a, in a, at, a different, at a difficult angle and it put him flat on the uh, key ball right. going into the key ball. So it put him flat on that red in the corner, which he wasn't able to control the cue right. ball as well as he could have to the final key red ball, which would have put him in perfect line for the eight. Right. So it was the ball in the middle of the table that really created the problem and for him. Is, and it is those, those angles that he just missed. They seem to be the shots that everybody's missing. I saw Ephraim miss a shot yesterday where he was cutting the ball into the corner pocket. And, it, you know, normally you'd expect them to make it, but they're just overcutting them a little bit. And I agree. And when you, But when you see... Uh, upper echelon players, world-class upper echelon players, miss those balls more often than we would think they should then, be missed. Then it's got to be. So, no, there's something to that, Jeff. There's something to that. And what could be to that is that the table is a very demanding table, you know, and the distance that balls travel, even though it appears to us that they don't travel that, that much of a distance, maybe we're wrong. Maybe yeah. they're traveling more of a distance than what we feel, and they're missable. Right. And plus, they're stretching a little bit as well, I think, sometimes. Instead of getting the bridge, they're stretching. So It's definitely the size of the table that's doing it. That's, there you go. Uh, there you go. You got it. It's the size of the 5 by 10 table. And it makes the longer shots much harder. Oh, uh, much, Johnny much harder. Johnny told me that yesterday. I much said, harder. I said, what are you looking out for on these tables? What's the biggest thing that you know, hits you? And he goes, you, he said, Jeff, you got to concentrate on those long shots. And I'm going to tell you another factor while we're at it. We're talking about the 5 by 10 table. The 5 by 10 table is such a demanding table that it makes you work hard all the time. It's not like you're playing on a, on a three and a half by seven or even a four and a half by nine where you can relax a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. You're always under stress and pressure when you're on a five by 10. It just makes you work and makes you work and it wears on you. Mm -hmm. So when you do come with a shot that carries pressure, you're a little more taxed going into that shot mm -hmm. and the results that we see at times by missing a ball it's kind of understandable. And it's through the whole group. It's not just one player. We've seen all the players missing where you wouldn't expect them to miss. Right. Johnny, right. Johnny just had the, the cue ball cleaned up there a little bit. Five by table doesn't show favoritism. It doesn't say, well, for Johnny, we're going to be lenient. And for Corey, we're going to be tough. No, it doesn't do that. And after game number nine, Archer now has a three-game lead at six games to three. And uh, now every time Corey has an opportunity from here out, he's going to have to make good with it. Yeah, well, Corey's sitting in his chair muttering to himself at the moment, doing a Mika. Yeah, getting back to young Mr. Burford, he flew back uh, a few days ago to England and he's playing in Germany this weekend. So uh, he gets around that kid. He, he needs the Moscone points. He's 11th on the Moscone Cup list. And if he could get another win on the Euro Tour and uh, a good placing at US Open, get on the Moscone Cup. So. Well, he must be on a really uh, uh, a great trip uh, in, in terms of... Uh, being as young as he is, competing against the best players in the world right. and doing consistently well, you would have to be really tripping. Like, wow, this is this is great. Well, he says he's not, but I, you know, 
I, I think who knows what goes on between his ears, but he says he doesn't get phased out by it. And, you know, there's a lot to be said about that. He's not being over, overly whelmed, right. you know, with, you know with, with ha what's happening, and it's not too much for him, which, is that, which makes him able to do the things he does. You know, he stays pretty level-headed, which helps him accomplish what he wants to set right. out to do. Well, we've just had Archer uh, break rank uh, 10. Nothing down again. This is a common cause we've seen throughout these. This is the third day here. It looks like the red balls are definitely the better color. Well, you got two there by the spot, Billy. I don't know where if they're, the, if they're that. Red, you know, two balls by the spot. If that combination is aimed toward a pocket, I think the red balls are better. It's dead in the side, that's for sure. Because there's one ball in the yellow group that's a very, very difficult ball, and that's the ball behind the eight. I don't see how you can, you know, negotiate that ball if you're yellow. I definitely would take the red balls here. It all depends on how if those balls are lined up in the pocket. If they are, then then that's the that's the deal maker for me right there. I'm taking the reds. He must have been thinking there because he missed uh, missed a com missed one in the side earlier. But that was going through his mind. Now, for the red, dropping on the eight could be a problem later in the rack. That's one of the problems you're going to have taking the red balls. So you're going to have to figure out what you're going to need to do to get on that key ball to drop for the eight because the eight ball is in a very difficult position for the red. You might take one of those two balls now. That, that. He would like to move that eight if possible, or at least the yellow behind it at some point. If he could do that during his run, he would really simplify the remainder of his run. I think he's just going to nip this back a little bit. Oh, didn't like that. Oh, I, don't know what he, what he was, I don't know what he planned to do there, because he hit it with a hard speed. Had he not run into that yellow, he would have created a problem providing the combination isn't on. I don't think that goes in that corner pocket either. I don't know. I think it's pretty close. Maybe half a pocket. I think it's pretty close. I think it may go. I think it's it's a type of a combination that you don't want to shoot, but if you have to and you need to, you will. Call. Call. He's playing position for the combination here. Okay, now when he plays position for this combination, there's a possibility that he could move the yellow or the black. And in doing so, if he, if he attempts to do that, there's also the likelihood that he could possibly end up in back of one of those balls and snooker himself. And he threw it off. Well, I was sitting right in line with that, Billy, and it did not go in that corner. I didn't want to interrupt you when you was talking. And there was a gap between it, so he couldn't throw it. So that was Had a bad he shot. hit the other side of that combination, he would have. He would have been able to push it. Yeah. He would have threw it the other way. He figured that the English that he was using, well, the English he was using actually worked against him. Yeah. I, I don't understand why he shot yeah. it the way he did. And see, it's it's aiming a little high. And there's and, a gap between it as and well. The, but the gap that was there in between both balls wasn't enough of a gap, okay, for him to cut that bottom ball. Right. And I'm really surprised that he didn't understand that shot. Because the way he hit it indicated to me he didn't really understand that shot. Well, Johnny's put him on the top rail. Oh, yeah, he's probably going to end up kicking here, kicking that center red in, if he can. That would be uh, my guess. Well, he's, he's gone from what looked like an easy run out to... Uh... He's bending this.
Oh. Wow. Come on. That was those claps. Uh, well, that was one of the sh best shots in the tournament right there. I think looking at his face, he was a bit surprised that did it that way. I don't think he was playing it. He did it that way. That's exactly the way he played it. You think it. so? Oh, it, 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 I'm positive. Oh, his face didn't show it. His face. Oh, I'm positive he played it that way. Right. Well, that was a good shot then. It was a great shot. He had a look of ho-hum on his face, wasn't he? <laughs> he said, huh? In other words, I don't know how I arrived here, but I'm here. And I'll take it. 6-4. <laughs> Never count a champion out. Trust me. Never count a champion out. He had a twirl around the yellow, straightened it up, so we, play, we could, could play the carom off the other red. So he created the angle. You see, just by the amount of spin that he put on the cue ball should suggest strongly that, that he played what he played because you need a lot more spin on the cue ball if you play the, the red ball straight in because you need a lot of twirl. Right. He just put a half a twirl, meaning that he only needed a half of a turn. With a half of a turn, he could hit the first red exactly where he hit it, and it, w and it would then have the possibility of carrying him in off the, off the other red. And that's exactly what happened. He made a great shot, considering the distance that he had to travel. They hit it where he had to hit it, and he did everything perfectly. Well, he's hanging in there, Billy, 6-4. Still a couple behind. And if he wins this game, if he wins, oh my, oh my. <laughs> there was a lot of action down there at the, at the uh, head end of the table well, he there. He made a red. He made something. He made a red. Well, uh, even though the red appears like they may be a little bit better of the two colors, I think this the, is the yellow ball is the ball that he can make the most often. So he'll right. take the and yellow. I think this is an easy start for him, so he just wants to get it under and way with an easier shot. I right. Think. Okay, here we go. He's going to come. He don't want to kiss there. He don't want to kiss... There. Now that was good. Very good. Now the yellow ball, that's the problem ball, is the ball that's in between the three yellows he's shooting at. Now there's three yellows there. That, now the yellow he hit away is not the problem ball. Wow. And he made a he, he created more of a problem for himself. He's going to play the combo. He was going to have to, I think. Yep, he's going to have to play the combination. Now keep in mind, making the combination is doesn't solve the problem of getting out. It just gives himself a chance to get out, and he's got to make sure that the combinating ball, the lead ball, doesn't tie up. Oh, you kidding me? That's that's almost impossible to think that he missed that, Billy. Well, I didn't really see the angle that he had on the combination, but it seemed like it was fairly straight, and I thought he had to cut that yeah. that, that head ball. But he maybe he did. Oh. Uh, if we can get behind him to take a look at the angle he was looking at, shooting the combination. Okay, we only have one angle here, and that's good enough. It looks like it's it's pretty straight. But he was overly concerned about controlling that head b uh, ball in, in the oh, combination. And the cue ball. So he, he, got, yeah. he got perfect on his next shot, but unfortunately he never got to make it. Johnny uh, 
leapt out of his chair. Became aware of the shot clock. Uh, <laughs> okay, now he can slow down, get his 45 seconds back. The 45 second shot clock was expiring. It was down to like 12. And so then he, he was mindless of it. And then all of a sudden he said, hey, shot clock, boom. And he jumped on the table and shot a shot quicker than he would, would have liked. But uh, in spite of that, he was able to put it down and get shape. It's amazing how many times in this, in, even in this match and certainly in all the others, how many times we've seen it switch from one guy shooting, then the next guy shooting, and it's, you know, on runouts that you think they're going to make and they're not making them, you know? That's a nice shot. It's pretty. Nicely executed shot. Yeah. This looks like a walk in the park. Let's uh, see what happens. I don't know. It's not like an easy walk. A stumble? No, uh, you know, it's got a few... Uh, a hike. A few curves there in the road. You know, he's straight in on this ball, so he's gonna have to shoot this last red ball from a distance. He's got a little angle there to draw out a little. Well, he would like an angle to draw toward the red. Oh, he's gone down table far enough now to where he'll just float it with the center ball using center left, which will which will just send him naturally cross table about two feet from the black. He has an option to go inside or outside. I like outside. He would increase the accuracy of the shot. And this is this will put him on the hill, Billy. So this he went inside. So he uh, obviously shot, seen something I didn't. Moved all the chalks off the rail. Clears the balls out of the pocket. Sort of a hab habit he's got there doing that. This shot will put him on the hill. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He needed every bit of that pocket. Almost. After game number 11, it's Archer with the lead at right three games at seven games to four. Yeah, he needed every bit of that pocket. And After that. he struck that ball, it didn't seem like it had, it didn't seem like it was close enough to the rail to, to be a cinch right. pocket, you know? But uh, well, he, is, he, he, he was able to put it down. This is big for Johnny because this will put him uh, three wins, one loss. So no yeah. one's better than him at the moment or won't be. I don't no. think he could, whoever wins will be level with him maybe. Right. And he knows that if what three wins and a loss, that he'll probably be in the running for the best record. Now, with four wins and a loss, that assures him of at least being tied for the best record, mm -hmm. at least. But right. at three wins and a loss, that puts him in a real good spot. Four wins and a loss guarantees him. And Corey but first, had, he has to win. Corey had great expectations, but just hasn't worked out. Well, that's the red. It's coming down the table. It's going to drop. Table's open, but what's not open is a shot. So he's going to have to play it safe here. He's going to probably he's going to probably draw back to the end rail here. See, just stopping the ball there is not good enough, really. He can refreeze him on the on the red here. That's why I didn't like staying where he did. See, now he just, like, gave it back to him. Yeah, because it's an open table, so that's a privilege you don't normally get. When a guy says you, you usually got to go for another ball, but it's a different situation here at the start of the game. Yeah, I, I was actually referring to the Johnny's uh, option when he played safe the way he did. Uh-oh. 
That that's a better shot for uh, for Archer than the other one. Uh, now Duel is going to have a problem playing safe from here. Duel's looking to play it safe. Well, I don't know why he's got 64 seconds because. Supposed to be a 45 second shot clock. Oh, okay. Okay, the reason the shot clock is at 64 and not at 45 is because there's always going to be a 90 second shot clock until a color is established. Once the color is established for a player, then the shot clock will go to 45 seconds. That'll be the time allotted in between shots once a color is established. 45 seconds. Johnny Joshin with the crown. Says I'm going to make one of those reds. I'm not sure which one yet. That'll work. Yeah, you would love to be able to shoot that red by the side pocket, but you really can't afford to do that now because of the position of the two reds here near the head, uh, the, the foot rail. You have to clear those reds up now. And in doing so, you really want to leave yourself positioned to play the position for the red near the right hand side pocket off your second red because that's the ball that needs to be addressed and soon. I didn't like what he did there. I did not like what he did there. Now he's got an awkward angle. He's going to have to use it. He's going to have to use the bridge. He's going to have to twirl it. That was a real, in my opinion, that was a real poor shot. Gonna bring it back straight up the table. He wants to try to stay underneath that red. You see, that's what he it. did. He created that problem simply because he didn't understand the importance of coming up with a better shot than that, considering what he had to do with the cue ball for his next shot. Because he was just too careless. The shot that preceded and, that shot. And the most important thing, Billy, we were talking about the bridge earlier. The bridge came into play there. Now, I mean, this is the shot that he couldn't put down, but the, the shot that preceded this shot would, would be a better shot, in my opinion, to show the people what, what he did that I didn't agree with. He could uh, look back and regret that shot because Corey's only... Uh, Corey wins this, he's 7-5. He still can win. Certainly still thinks he can win. Well, let's just put it this way. The likelihood of him winning now is much more likely than it would have been if Archer would have put that ball down. Right, exactly. And the, the Johnny really didn't make the grave error by missing the ball that he missed. He made the error by playing position the way he did. Okay, here it is right here. Now, if he would have stayed in line, where all he would need to do is pocket the next red with a nice angle to drop for the red near the side pocket, this game would have been over and he would have won the match. He allowed the cue ball to go into the yellow and send the skew up toward the up, upper part of the right. table that gave him the difficult shot that he had to uh, use the bridge I, on. I, I don't know whether you noticed, Billy, but had he have made that shot, he had no shot after that. He was totally screwed up anyway on the yeah. next shot. Yeah, that's how badly he, uh, he positioned the cue ball for that bridge shot. Now this is a very delicate shot here too. He has to be very precise here. Which he kind of was. Well, now he's gonna be shooting into a half a pocket or maybe, I kind of like shooting the other ball and, and playing position for the, for the, for the closest, of this close yellow in the same pocket. See, he's gonna only have a pocket and then he's gonna play position. I don't like that. Right. I like shooting the other yellow 
agree. And play position for the same pocket if I could. Yeah, I'm going to bring this round two cushions behind it. He'll take that. Yeah, that's a much better solution to the problem because by shooting this yellow in this pocket, you're shooting into a half a pocket, yeah. which not only... I, I don't even think it's half a pocket, Billy. Which no. not only limits you to this, this, the shot, the accuracy of the shot, but it also limits you what you can do with the cue ball. Now all of a seven, uh, all of a sudden at seven to five, uh, winning is definitely a reality at seven to five. At seven to three or seven to four, you know you're just going through the motion. You, you think you're going to get, gonna get at, a little giddy up at, any step? Yeah, at seven to five, you're walking back to the chair. You're saying to yourself, "Hey, hey, I can win this thing." You know, I can win this from seven to five for sure. You know, because what at one time seemed like. A you mountain, know, a mountain of climb. You know, like, like impossible or <laughs> hopeless. Now, all of a sudden, there's a heartbeat out there, you know? I, 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 gar I guarantee you, if you took his pulse right now, it would be a two or three beats quicker. He definitely feels that he can win it now. And uh, his opponent, Archer... He's feeling totally the opposite. He's also feeling that Duel can win it now. Yeah. You know? So that's going to affect possibly, you know, his ability to perform them when he gets back to the table. What did I do? Johnny's sitting there saying to himself. Uh-oh, he, he put a ball down. And you know when you put a ball down and you're the first one at the table to select the color, you're the favorite right. in the game. And the... Uh there's a yellow there between two blacks by the spot that's a bit awkward. It's difficult to say what's the best uh, selection here. I don't think he's got much odds. I think he's going to have to go. Well, he does. He has, a, he has a shot on the red on the side or he has a shot on the yellow on the side. Yeah. I kind of like the reds. Yeah, I do. The red on the side. I kind of like the reds for a couple reasons. The main one is, is the shot, the first shot is the easier shot. He would like to bump that yellow a little bit, but then again, he may hook himself from this red. Then he'll be forced to maybe take a tough shot. He's, I think what he's gonna do is he's gonna softly roll this. He's not gonna do any bumping. He's gonna roll this shot. He's gonna get rid of those two uptown, I guess. I don't really like what he's doing here. I would have saved those three balls as my last balls. I think there's more problems on this end of the table. Back door. Do you see that slide in there, back door? See, he's going to have to get, let's get an overhead, please. He's going to shoot this shot and swing over for the ball on the left. Slow down. Let's, there no, he, now he's forced to shoot the red down table. I don't know if he can even make this ball. Hey. Certainly doesn't look like it on the on the monitor, but I guess it must, unless he's gonna. Okay, here's where here's what he's up against now. He says he thinks he can make it. Well, if he thinks he can make it, then he's gonna have to twirl it softly. By twirling it softly, he's going to end up with a long shot on the next red. Now, with a long shot on the next red, he's going to have to stop the cue ball after pocketing the next shot on the next red and accept a, a little bit of an awkward angle on the, on the next red. And draw it back just a tad if he can. Still not, he's still not out of trouble. Okay, now... If he can stop the ball or draw it back maybe an inch or so or two inches, then he'll be positioned ideally then for the red behind the foot spot. No, yeah. he's following it, meaning, meaning that he, he has too much of an angle. Now, 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 the speed of this shot is very crucial. It's very crucial that he hits it with the correct speed. 
and I don't know if that's good. He's got a little bit of an angle. I don't know if that's good because he wanted to be slightly underneath the red. He looks like he's pretty pretty awkward and straight. He's going to have to force it now. Yeah. He didn't get up as high as he wanted to, but he got up high enough. Probably just run off the run off the yellow here, put it up by the in line for the yeah. It's a good shot. That's all well, she wrote. That's over with. All the tough work is over with. All he needs to do now is pocket the eight, and he'll be within one game of the lead. Seven to six. Well, now we have a ball game. Oh, we had a ball game going into that rack. Now, now we have we have really something exciting coming up. Seven to six, Archer allowing Duel at the table to close the gap, which he has closed quite well after trailing seven yeah. games to four. He now is only trailing seven games to six, and Archer is feeling it right now too. Gonna so have therefore, to, have to come up with his best game here. That's and he's right. Got to make something on the break. Wants That's to be right. In, wants to be in control at least. It's Corey looking happy in his chair there. But Archer hasn't been in this position. It isn't that he hasn't been in this position before. Okay, I mean, to uh, to amass the type of credentials and record that he has, you know that he's been in this position thousands of times, thousands of times. He knows how, how what it takes and what he needs to do uh -huh. to win this match. Well, he's just lost two games in a row. He doesn't want to lose three. So let's see what he does here. Oh, that cue ball was flying. Yeah, he was He was fortunate that it didn't jump off the table. Yeah. But in the meantime, duel at the table with uh, with an option here. Wow. See the close proximity of that eight to the pocket, Billy. This is a tough decision here. You know, if he sh if he chooses to go with yellow and he plays the the yellow uh, the red yellow combination, he opens up everything for red, and then he commits himself that he has to run out. If he chooses red, he has the ability. Do you see the ball? Let me get an overhead here. This ball right here. You see this ball? If he chooses red, he can at some point position the cue ball here, play this red off of this yellow, and open up the pocket. So therefore, he has a solution with the red, but it's not going to be easy getting there. Oh, plan, plan B, plan A. He shot it, and he said, I don't know why. Well, that's that's a little negativity no, there. It's, uh, you know, I mean, he's got a lot of work with red. A lot of work with red. But if he would have and made the combination red-yellow, okay? He, he just muttered, I can't get out here. So that's like... He can get out. No, but I think he's thinking about this one down the corner He here. can get out, he, like I mentioned. Right. He can get out. He can he can play the red off of the yellow. Unusual bridge holding here. Watch this, guys. It's very, yeah, very different. And this is a very uh, unique way he has. He's uh, really developed the skill to use the bridge in the fashion that he's using it. Well, he moved the yellow. <laughs> well, maybe maybe not so unique a bridge. Well, Archer has some work in front of him, too. Even though Duel missed, a, missed yeah. a makeable ball and the table appears to be fairly open, it's really not because the, the black eight ball blocks the pocket for that lone yellow on the side where the eight ball is. The two balls that are tied up near the left side pocket, that presents a problem. It doesn't have a pocket. It doesn't have a pocket at all here, I don't think. You know? He can thinly cut this ball, but well, what's he going to do with the cue ball? So he, uh, going somewhere with the cue ball may be a problem, which it 
which it kind of was. Now he's going to eliminate this ball, and this ball here was a good ball to open up the other uh, yellow on the other side of the table, and he can't do that. And he still has the two balls tied up near the side. That's always going to be a problem until he unties them. Wow, he's out of breath just thinking about all these things yeah. that he has to do. He wants to get back uptown, he wants to get up the top of the table you know? and play a safe, probably. I mean, he's got some serious problems here. Now, what's he going to do? Play safe behind the eight? He's tired of thinking, so he's going to just play safe. He says, you know, I'm tired of thinking about this. He said, what I'm going to do is alleviate one of my problems and play safe. And that is I'm going to, I'm going to move the yellow that's a problem, put it in a makeable position, reposition the cue ball behind the eight, limit do what he can do when he gets to the table, and I think I've done my job, which I think he has. Well, Corey might be wanting to look at, I think he's pushing it away from the pocket, but there's a possible carom off that side pocket with the yellow. Yeah, but <laughs> it's it's possible, uh, all right. Impossible. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he'd be pushing it away from the... No, he's going for it. Well, he's going to carry him off both of those yellow balls. Nope. He wanted to hit the front yellow ball first to get that double carom. That right. would have put it on the angle of, of the pocket. Now let's take a look at red's position, or excuse me, at yellow's position. It's a bit of a mess down here, believe it or not. You know, uh, because of the safety that Archer played, actually earned him the position that the, that the yellow balls are in now. Mm -hmm. uh, the two yellow balls that were tied up are no longer tied right. up. There was two by the side that were tied up then. The yellow ball that was in front of the eight is no longer there. Mm -hmm. So now he's at the table and he's feeling <laughs> a lot better, isn't he? Yeah. Well, he doesn't have to think of all those problems, you know. He's really breathing well. He's looking good. He's got color in his face. Yeah, that was a clever move. Oh, but yeah. you have to make the ball. Yeah. Well, that was only half a pocket, and these are, you know, four-inch pockets, so not a I'm lot not, of room. I'm not going for that, uh, Jeff, half a pocket. That was... That was, I think that was a whole very pocket, makeable, <laughs> very makeable. Now that was an excellent shot. Yeah, I was saying, I was saying to myself, what is he going to do? Well, he cleared the pocket, cleared the pocket, and saved him. That yeah, was cool. an excellent shot. That shot won him this game, and this is going to be a hill hill match. That shot won him the game. Let's see how close Johnny gets this. Wow. He's going to have to hit this with a little speed because he's going to go into that red. He's going to have to hit it with a little English. Uh, well, I don't know what English he's going to hit it with. Let me see. Well, he's not going into the red. That's great. For, for duel, that is. But he's got to be concerned with that red that's in, in front of the eight because the eight ball blocks the pocket for that. He's taking a look at it now. I don't know how much of a pocket it blocks. It may be blocking the entire pocket. And if it is, he's going to probably have to get to it off that red from the bottom cushion. If he plays position on the red in front, in, that's on the bottom cushion, he can go underneath that red and play position for that red in the opposite pocket. He's got a, a little higher than he wanted. That was a really, he got careless on that if shot. If he got straighter on this, he could have played it off the eight and moved the eight away from the corner, but it's a too awkward now. You know, now he's going to have a problem going around the red, so he's going to have to start thinking about going into the red. And, by, and going into the red, whew, it's really scary. Well, he's got the red over the side pocket as I a like, safety. I like this better. I like him shooting the red in the corner positioning the cue ball a little bit better for the other red.
Oh, well, now he's opting to. Now, now he's still got a problem here. He's going to try to drift down and play position for the red in the lower right-hand corner. But this route is really fraught with peril because he's got to get pretty good. You know what? It, with, a, with a natural ball, he's going toward the yellow, and he can't yeah. afford to do that. And it's going to be going pretty fast as well. He's got some problems here. It's, this, this takes a perfect touch. This takes a perfect touch, and he didn't have it, you see? It took a perfect touch, and now he's found himself on the rail. With a tester. With a tester, and it's not an easy shot. Now, he can go up table with the shot, and when he does that, the cue ball is going to go toward the yellow that's in the, in the side pocket. So he's got to hit this softly and accurately, and this is a tough shot. A must make. Got him like this. See now the cue ball. Well, the cue ball was going toward the yellow, but he ran into the red. I tell you what, that was a good shot, Billy. He made an excellent shot, and uh, we have a hill hill match here. What we figured what was going to happen is happening, and this match is going to come down to one final game at seven apiece. That's what the fans like, Hill Hill. Wow. Take it away, Billy. Well, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> Archer, Archer had opportunities the last couple times he was at the table, and he didn't do well with them, and I thought that he should have is that going to affect him in this final game? It could. Duel, on the other hand, was practically out of the match. Really didn't have much hope at all to win this match. A couple of things that Archer did allow him back at the table to get that heartbeat and that energy that he needed to win this match. And now he has tied it up at 7-7. He has the momentum. And of the two players out there, I make him the favorite to win this match. And, and he's breaking, Billy. That's simple. Now, this this was a tough shot. Yeah, he, the angle that he had didn't send him toward the yellow on the side. It sent him toward the two, the two balls on the right side. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, he had to concentrate. Most importantly, he had to concentrate on pocketing the ball. And that's what he did. Who's your money on, Billy? I like Duel. I like Duel to win this game. Win this game. I like Archer right now, though, because he didn't pocket a ball. <laughs> oh, he did pocket a ball? Yeah, he did. I love Duel. <laughs> I love Duel to win this match. After uh, pocketing a ball. Well, the red goes in the side, runs up, runs up the table a little bit for the same ball in the side if, if pocket. The, if the red goes, there's no choice. The red is definitely the right color. If the red goes, um, I can. This could be a real quick rack, I think. I, I can see the pattern already here. This this is this is definitely a winning a winning pattern for uh, for Duel. And all Johnny can do is sit there and uh, just hope he gets back to the table. This is probably one of the most simple racks that there's been a layout of, Billy. Crucial shot. I wouldn't stay on the rail on this shot. I would I would get off the rail on this shot or get almost straight in with a slight angle cutting it to the left. If you stay on the rail, it's a bad angle. Well, this is bad news. He's using the bridge again. He doesn't want to stay on the rail with the cue ball. He wants relief from that rail. It would be good if he could go over about six or seven inches. That's what he wanted to do. He got to get over further than that. No, he wanted he wanted to get over further than that. Now he's awkward with the bridge. So therefore, there is suspense left in this rack. Yeah. Had he gotten over another two or three inches, then he would have had automatic position. But now he has to work at it, and that's not going to be easy. Well, he'd, he'd have to use the bridge for this shot, but the other shot on a normal nine foot, he would have been able to reach that. He can even play it off the yellow. Okay, that's going to be fine. He doesn't want to get on the rail. Okay, he's glad that's over. 
Did you see him take that sigh, yeah. that, deep, that deep breath there? I think he's got just a little angle to get off that cushion and come back out here. Sometimes a little angle is more than enough. No, he'll, yeah, he had too, too much energy there. See, he hit it too hard. He hit it too hard. Yeah, well, that's... A lot of pressure out there, a lot of pressure. Given the situation, that's what that's about. Mm, that, was a pressure, that was a pressure shot there. That was the result of pressure right there. And he's, he's breathing hard. Look at him breathing. Look at him breathing. He's, now what does he do? He's here? breathing he, hard right now. A lot of pressure. Try and cut this in the side pocket and go around, or is he going to try and play it safe? He's really speeding right now. I don't know what he's thinking about, but he's thinking fast. Well, he's going to be crashing into everything here, I think. He wants to kiss the. He wants to go around. He missed it. Just cost him the match, probably. Most likely it did. Archer has many options now. Well, he has many an easy, options. easy ball on the bottom rail to, if he needs to get out of dodge. Now it's up to Archer. Archer faulted the last two opportunities to win this match, giving Duel the opportunity to do what he had a chance to do but didn't. Now it's Archer's turn. Yeah. Well, it's a quick picture as of uh, Corey squirming in his chair there, realizing that uh, probably lost the cause here. Stroking the first shot, and it's always good to do that. But you still have to come up with the shot, which he has. Archer would like to reposition some of these balls and play some sort of a safety, but he doesn't want to give Corey a kick at the red. I don't blame him. He's going to have to run out. That's his best shot to win. Even though it appears that he has the luxury of playing some sort of a safety, mm -hmm. I wouldn't give Duel a kick. No way. He's stroking the ball hard enough in case he missed not to give up a shot on the red. He wants to get in position to where he can shoot one of those two yellows by the side down the corner and open up the balls. Once the balls are open, once those two balls are open, this rack becomes very simple because they're positioned very closely to the side. The ball below him is the one that's, uh, if anything, more of a problem because it's uh, stopping getting on those other two balls. He should attack that those two balls on his next shot. He missed it. He left, he left Duel a kick. Yeah, but he, he knew, I think he knew Billy leaving him safe there. Let's take a look at that red ball in relation to the bottom cushion. Can we do that? If the red ball is positioned a quarter of an inch or less, or a little bit less off that cushion, this is not a very difficult kick. That's not a very difficult kick. That is not a very difficult kick. It's not a difficult kick. Wow. Cool that, Billy. Especially being off the cushion like that. Well, I think Duel has it now. Corey. After making that shot, he should be pumped. He never thought he was ever going to be back at the table. Oh, my. What a match to win. What a match to win. Put, put that one on your DVD <laughs> list, folks, because that was a good one. What a match to win. But it was a worse match to lose. Yeah, absolutely. Well, anyways, we're going to be back in the next round with Alex Pagulain and Efren Reyes. And if that match is anywhere nearly as exciting as this match, whew, and it could be because these two guys want to beat one another badly. They're both from, from, from the Philippines, so don't miss it. We'll be back.